gracious creator of heaven and earth. Your word has come among us as the true son of righteousness, and the good news of his birth has gone out to the ends of the world. Open our eyes to the light of your law, that we may be purified from sin and serve you without reproach. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our light and our life. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray, Creator God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Merciful grant that your people journeying together in partnership may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Isaiah. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks. to God. According to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was in the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him, and cried out, this was he whom I said, he who comes after the ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of Christ. My sermon this day is actually based on the reading that is appointed for Prop 12, which is Sunday, the 21st of June 2020. And it is appropriate to hear these words from Matthew 10, verses 24 to 39. Jesus said, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Dashu, how much more will they malign those of his household so they have no fear of them? For nothing is covered up that the will not be uncovered, and nothing secret will become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell of the light, and, you, and what you hear whisper proclaim from the housetops. 
Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Not two sparrows sold for a penny, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head will be counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny my Father in heaven. I do not think I have come peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And those who find their life will lose it, and those who will lose their life for my sake will find it. Here ends the lesson. These words this day are offered in the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new worlds, and to seek out new life and civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. This is the opening monologue delivered by Captain James T. Kirk, a.k.a. Canadian actor, William Shatner, that began each, star, each episode of the 1960s TV show Star Trek. This TV show has become a cult classic and has spawned all sorts of other Star Trek shows. This opening monologue also helps us to see the mission to which Jesus called his disciples. He called disciples to a mission to spread the good news, to seek out new folks to hear the message, and to boldly go where no other disciples had heretofore ventured. Being a disciple of Jesus can bring great joy. It can change and shape one's life. At its best, it is a great adventure, a great journey, one full of surprise, expectation, and new life. It is living the Easter story and the hope of Pentecost, a building a new community not just in the heavenly realm, but in the earthly realm as well. Pope Francis calls all Christians to celebrate the joy of the gospel. That's the title of his papal exhortation issued in late 2013. In the words of one writer, this pope's direct, colorful language and obvious passion for his subject make for a surprisingly good read. The passion of this pope or as he prefers to be called the Bishop of Rome, for is for the mission of the church and to be her concern for the poor. This Pope has offered a critique of our capitalistic system, and as we know, not everyone has been excited by this Pope's analysis. However, for Francis, this is truly the joy of the gospel, to create a world where everyone is included and where there is dignity for all. I think this is a message that has even more meaning in light of the pandemic and with Arnell being forced to grapple with the effects of racism. So what does this mean to be a disciple, or stated a little differently, a follower of the Christ or of Jesus? Russian dictator Joseph Stalin was once asked, so how many divisions did the Pope have? The answer, of course, was none. The Pope, or better stated, the Church, has no palaces or armies per se. Instead, the Church has the Prince of Peace. The one who came into our lives at Christmas, the one who changed our lives. And Francis invites Christians everywhere, not just Catholics, but for all of us to take another look at Jesus. The response has been remarkable. In some ways, Francis is like a rock star, which to which he cringes. And yet Pope Francis uses his position to remind us over and over that following Jesus can be full of joy and it is okay to follow Jesus. 
And yet, at times, following Jesus, the Prince of Peace, can be challenging. The reaction of American conservative commentators to Pope Francis is a case in point. Some have even called him a Marxist or a communist. Now, he's anything but. Because if we take the Gospel of Jesus seriously, it can set our world on its head. We can see the world through a new lens, and our lens, as followers of Jesus, is different. It's through that eyes of Jesus who offers mercy, love, and reconciliation. Now, the Pope has responded to these allegations by saying, well, Marxist theology is wrong, but I've met many Marxists in my life who are good people, so I don't feel offended. So we all know, though, that the church doesn't always get it right. Triumphalism, residential schools, sexual abuse scandals, even how we have processed racism as it relates to our indigenous communities show where we have gone off the rails. And yet the church is trying to mend the world, to be in right relationship with survivors of residential schools, to be in right relations with our indigenous communities, and to be in right relations to those who are survivors of, of abuse. Now, for some, our response has been too slow. For others, well, we're not sure. And we're not sure what a response should be. Yet what the church is doing is acknowledging our human frailties and sinfulness. And that is not always an easy task. However, when we do get things right, and we often do, we try to build a new world based on compassion, on love, mercy, and equality. That's why the Pope and other religious leaders speak out for the dignity of all workers. And yet, it can be a challenge to be a follower of Jesus. And so I ask, who should this church be speaking for? Who at this point in time should the church give voice to? Is that the ones on the margins? Is it folks who are not in our pews? Who should that be? And it can be a difficult question because it goes to the heart of who we are. Who we are as folks who we come to church, who listen to church online, and who try to live that faithful life. Theologian Stanley Hauerwas frames it this way. A church that is not missionary, that is not a missionary church, is not a church. And as such, it suggests that maybe our place is to speak for those who are on the margins. However, the gospel can interfere with our living of lives. At best, it can be a wonderful mission, not unlike the Star Trek monologue, and other times it can unsettle, and we just don't know what to do with this being unsettled. And yet, do we, how do we listen to the gospel and how do we not ignore the gospel message? It is to this challenge that Jesus speaks in our gospel reading this day from Matthew. Jesus instructs his disciples on how they should relate to him and the teachings. Fred Craddock notes, Matthew is giving to his church, which is living under social, economic, and political as well as religious pressure, the word of Jesus for their situation. The benefit of this is that it helps the disciples to better understand the words of Jesus, how the words of Jesus functioned for those early Christians, and how the church would appropriate the teachings of Jesus in any given time and place. In this text, Jesus both charges and encourages the church to face, in the, to face opposition without being paralyzed by fear. Jesus tells his disciples that they can expect opposition because their leader, Jesus, faced it as well. In fact, Jesus is called Bashu in this text, which is translated the devil. And Jesus also notes that being a follower can cause strife in the family. Jesus notes, I'm not come to bring peace, but a sword. I, for I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother. And it suggests those in Matthew's church who have experienced such domestic strife can be encouraged to know that such pain was and is no surprise to God. At the same time, 
for one of the family to become a disciple of Jesus had serious personal, domestic, political, and even economic consequences. In effect, Jesus is saying you can't be a Christian in private and pretend in public that you have nothing to do with this. Jesus reminds modern disciples that following can be a challenge, and even though it is a challenge, God is always with us, and God will not abandon his followers. For those who do follow, family and friends may not understand why one does that. It certainly occurred in my own family, but call and discipleship is like that. Because we, we follow, because we are invited to do so. And I know within my own immediate family, they have wondered why I would become a minister and now a priest. And yet, over the years, women and men have followed the one that we call the Christ. They have followed to find new life, the joy of new life offering, service in the name of the risen one. It's pretty countercultural, yet it does change one. It does change us as one sees the world in new and even more wonderful ways. Stanley Howells notes, Jesus' instruction for the disciples' mission, however, remain true for any understanding of Christian evangelism. Too often concern for the status of the church tempts some to employ desperate measures to ensure that the church will remain socially significant. But the church is not called to be significant or large. The church is called to be apostolic. Faithfulness, not numbers or status, should be the characteristic that shapes the witness of the church. Indeed, it may well be the case in our time that God is unburdening the church so that we again can travel light. We are on a mission, and that mission is to explore our relationship with Christ and the world around us, to go where few dare to go. This exploration may seem strange in our world today, especially in this time of COVID-19, but it is something Jesus invites us to do. And we undertake this exploration. It will challenge us. It will unsettle us. It will change us. Well, at the same time, it will offer great joy because we will see our world in new and wonderful ways. May your journey as disciples help you to grow in faith, help you to see the world in new ways, and help you to offer witness in his name to the world that is in need of this hope. It is both a challenge and a joy to follow Jesus. Amen. We stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, to whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us in the conscious time. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, I the life for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all creation in its wonderful diversity, for good weather, and for abundant harvests for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, especially those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, for prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering St. Luke and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt hear their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, everlasting life. For thou, Father, art good and loving, and we glorify thee through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us con humbly confess our sins to God Almighty. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins in all, in all them that with heartily repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And
Let us pray. Creator, you bless us with many good gifts. Return to you from your creation. Feed us with the, feed us with the bread of life, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. one body with him 
that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Now, as our Savior hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in the manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he
Let us pray. Great Creator, you have fed us with bread from heaven. Continue to renew us in your truth. Give light to our minds, strength to our bodies, and seal us with your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us, we can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen and amen. I have no announcements this morning. I don't know if anybody else has announcements. We sing our closing hymn. <laughs>